This week, one of the five incarnate upgrades available is for the Cybear. This notoriously expensive to craft weapon is a hammer with innate cold damage and some additional cold based features. I'll show you what the incarnate upgrade does for it and how well it competes. I'm the Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. Obtaining the Cybear is simple. First you buy the blueprint for the Magistar from the market and build that. Then you buy the blueprint for the Cybear and consume the Magistar as part of the building process. Please take note of the fact that the Cybear also needs 30,000 cryotic, chiefly obtained from excavation missions at 100 cryotic per excavator. Oh, naturally as well, you'll need to obtain the Incarnate Genesis adapter from the Steel Path circuit and attach it via Cavalero at the cost of some basic Deviri resources. The basic Cybear itself is an underwhelming weapon, probably why it got picked for the Incarnate upgrade. It has innate cold damage and otherwise somewhat lackluster stats as a hammer. Hammers have no force slash on their stances and are slow to hit, which makes them usually ill suited for dealing with armoured targets. With the inclusion of innate cold, you also can't go for a pure toxin build on the Cybear, instead, required to do magnetic toxin or blast toxin using three elemental mods, which makes it less favourable for the Corpus too. As much as it is easier to achieve a viral build with just one toxin mod, Viral alone usually doesn't win any awards. This all puts the Cybear in a bit of a tricky spot, kept up only by its comparatively high base damage and attack speed for a hammer. In terms of unique traits, it has a couple details to help you out. It gains an invisible status chance boost after doing a heavy attack, though this only lasts for a few seconds. With such a short duration on something as costly as a heavy attack, it's not the most useful. The other trait is that slam attacks have a chance to apply cold procs to any enemy hit, regardless of the weapon's damage type modding. It's only a chance of happening and it isn't tied to your status chance stat, however this does mean you can apply cold procs to enemies as part of the slam attacks found in many hammer combos. So far, it's not an amazing weapon. Let's look at the incarnate side of things. Once you've installed the adapter, you'll have a few short challenges to do to unlock all the features. First, just do a mission with the Cyber equipped, you don't even have to use it. I did a quick void capture mission. Next, you need to activate the Incarna mode six times. You don't need to do it in one mission and you don't even need to finish the missions. So just load up a mission like Steel Path Survival, get six times combo, heavy attack to activate Incarna mode, and then leave. Rinse and repeat to do this quickly rather than waiting out the three minute timer each time. Finally, you need to kill a number of enemies affected by the lifted status. These kills don't need to be done with the Cyber, meaning you can do a heavy slam attack to lift up enemies, higher combo means a longer lifted time, and then kill them with any weapon to complete the challenge. I don't know if that's intended, but it works for now. With those challenges done, you get access to the Evolution perks. Evolution 1, like all incarnate melees, provides you with a temporary stat upgrade on performing a heavy attack or heavy slam. You need to have at least 6 times combo multiplier in order to activate the incarnate mode of the Cybear, and it lasts for 3 minutes. The stat buffs on the Cybear are relatively minor for incarnate mode. It gives you plus 100% melee damage, additive with other pure damage modifiers like Pressure Point. You get plus 50% heavy attack wind-up speed, reducing the whole time before actually doing the heavy attack. On top of this, you have plus 10% to both sprint speed and bullet jump velocity while active, even if the Cybear is holstered. This is one of the weakest transformation bonuses of all incarnate melees, and indeed all incarnate weapons. Despite expectations to the contrary, I've found no additional bonuses given by the Cybear transformation beyond the stat boosts. On to Evolution 2, which provides plus 20 damage, and then the choice of 10 additional combo gain on hitting enemies affected by cold, or an extra plus 40 damage if you have at least 450 armor. Firstly, the Cyber has a base of 270 damage, so plus 20 is extremely low. Secondly, the plus 20 and plus 40 damage do not scale with stance multipliers nor condition overload. The basic heavy attack climbs from 1620 damage to 1640 damage. Most moves on the Crushing Ruin stance have significant multipliers, so these damage bonuses are verging on meaningless. This just leaves you with the combo bonus, which, at time of recording, is incorrect. It doesn't give you 10 extra combo with each hit, it gives you just 5. Given the near uselessness of the plus 40 damage perk though, you may as well take the extra combo, especially as the Cyber occasionally procs cold with slams even as part of normal move combos. Let's move on to Evolution 3 then. This has three very simple options of either plus one range, some more heavy attack wind-up speed, or plus six seconds of combo duration. Combo duration you can get from the Steel Path Arcanes of primary and secondary dexterity, but it is neat to have. 
Heavy attack wind-up speed you probably don't need more of after already getting plus 50% from the Incarnate form. Mostly, I'd go for the additional range to save on adding a range mod to the Cyber. This brings it up to 3.6 meters of range, which is plenty enough given the weapon has a 0.4 follow through. Just as a reminder, follow through is how much damage you do to subsequent enemies if you hit more than one with a single swing. For the Cyber, that means the first enemy takes full damage, the second takes 40%, the third takes 16%, and the fourth just 6.4%. There's no cap on how low this goes, so having lots of range isn't really that useful on the Cyber. You can close the distance to single enemies, while there's very little bonus in hitting lots of enemies at once, at least for damage purposes. Okay, how about Evolution 4? Here you've got a pick of an initial combo bonus for killing enemies affected by 3 or more gold status effects, plus 25% critical chance, or plus 2 critical damage on your first attack after switching from your primary weapon. With the critical choices, you need to be aware of the base stats. Cyber has 15% critical chance and 2 times critical multiplier. This means a plus 25% critical chance is nearly tripling the critical chance, while a plus 2 critical damage is only doubling that value. After crunching the numbers, I can tell you that unless you either have external critical chance buffs, such as Arcade Avenger, or give the Cyber no more than plus 25% critical damage modding, the critical chance perk is always better. Not just most of the time, or when you're not using the bonus from switching off your primary weapon, always. Given that even the basic critical damage mod is plus 90%, this means a critical build Cybear with no external buffs will always be better off with the critical chance perk. Even if you should get an external critical buff, the extra critical damage only applies to a single swing with the Cybear after switching off your primary. You then need to re-equip it, such as by aiming, before continuing with another melee strike, interrupting your moveset. Overall, I just cannot recommend the conditional critical damage buff over the critical chance. But how about the other perk for initial combo? Initial combo is pretty much just used for heavy attack builds, which would seem to lean into the heavy attack wind bonuses that the Cybear receives. Now as much as the text states you only trigger the perk on a kill against an enemy with 3 plus cold procs on them, this is again just not true at time of recording. Firstly, you only need one cold proc on the enemy, either pre-existing, or you can trigger it as part of the attack itself. Secondly, the attack doesn't even need to kill the enemy. Every single hit on a cold afflicted enemy, including if that hit is what applies cold, will trigger the perk. I don't know why, we'll see how long that one lasts. The bonus itself is correct however. Each time it triggers, your initial combo climbs by 15. With a maximum of 4 stacks, this is an initial combo of 60, granting a 4 times combo multiplier. Every new stack applied will reset the timer, and you only lose one stack at a time, taking a full 40 seconds to lose all stacks. As an added benefit, each time a stack expires, it'll reset your combo timer. With a combo duration of over 10 seconds, this means your combo cannot drop until your initial combo stacks fully expire, even if you climbed up to a 12 times combo multiplier. Now this could be great, except for a few issues. The Cyber isn't that great for heavy attacks. Even with the Incarnum perks, it's a slow weapon, and it's delivering a heavy attack that has no four status effects aside from lifting or knocking down the enemy. Combined with the damage type distribution being mostly cold and impact, it has a poor chance of applying a deadly status effect. Sure, you can strip enemy defenses with something else first, but then any weapon can seem good if you first removed all tank from a target. On top of all this, if you're using the initial combo perk, then you're not using the critical chance perk. With the sacrificial set, you can get a plus 550% bonus to critical chance with a heavy attack. Without the critical chance perk, that'll bring you to 97.5% critical chance, versus with the critical perk, you hit 260% critical chance. This impacts the value of initial combo significantly. That's alongside the general downsides of heavy attack being slow, applying fewer status effects per second, and consuming any combo above your initial combo value. So realistically, we've got a cold based hammer with poor damage type options for both the corpus and the grenier, heavy attack perks which don't bring any particular magic to the table, and otherwise some stat boosts for 40% critical chance, 3.6 range, and some extra combo where cold happens. Don't get me wrong, a base 40% critical chance is amazing for a melee weapon, it's just limited by being on the cyber. It's very comparable to the existing hammer weapons like the Fraggle Prime, which also has a 40% critical chance alongside higher critical damage, or the Kuva Shield Egg, which has an even higher critical damage and your choice of innate element, but a lower critical chance. Aside from the gimmicks, 
there is otherwise very little difference between these three weapons in terms of results. For a build, we can use a tried and true hybrid setup using Viral Heat. Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds to scale off your combo. Your pick a Prime Pressure Point or Condition Overload for pure damage. Organ Shatter for critical damage. And Berserker Fury for attack speed. In lower enemy density missions, you can drop Berserker for quickening for lower attack speed buff that also increases your combo gain. If you have an external source of attack speed, such as Valkyr's Warcry, you can instead drop Berserker for Gladiator Might to get even higher critical hits. Due to the innate cold, it's difficult to go for a better elemental setup than 3 mods for Heat Viral. The only damaging status type you can get with just 2 elemental mods here would be Gas, which is only really suitable for grouped up and debuffed enemies. Because of this, we realistically need to keep the Viral Heat approach or waste the status output of the Cyber. You can opt to instead go for a direct damage focus with either pure Viral or Corrosive Cold, sparing a mod slot for one of the other flex options. This would work best when combined with a status primer and condition overload to make up for the lack of status damage. In terms of stances, the Crushing Ruin stance is significantly better than Shattering Storm, coming with a punishing neutral combo that's great for focusing a single target, and a forward blocking combo that can deal with clustered enemies before bringing down a strong attack on a targeted enemy. These combos both include slams, which will activate the cold proc trait of the Cyber, and the overhead strikes can land frequent headshots against humanoid enemies to further enhance your damage. Now, if you really want to be doing heavy attacks, you can swap out the critical perk for the initial combo gain and use this setup. That said, it really is just slower and less effective than using the normal attacks with the critical chance perk. If you're going down this road, then maxing out the mods will give you slightly more returns, but it's not enough to change the result in any meaningful way. Given the initial combo already provided by the evolution perk, Corrupt Charge would not be sufficiently helpful here as it won't give you a much higher bonus. Overall, the Cyber Incarnon is an upgrade. Compared to the base version, you nearly triple your critical chance, increase your range, and have extra damage thanks to the Incarnon mode and evolution perks. Appropriately modded, it can be okay as a melee weapon in the current meta, comparable to the Kuva Shield Egg or Fraggle Prime, but it's only slightly better than either despite the higher requirements to get it. Ranking Cyber Incarnon against the other Incarnon weapons, it simply isn't on the same level. If you really like the Cyber and hammers in general, then sure, grab it. However, if you're looking for the best return for your time and resources spent, this is not it. It's a chunk of weird ice on a stick. I want an ice cream.